Hi, and welcome back to our discussion. This is a continuation of our discussion on the Winter Night Trilogy, written by Catherine Arden. We hope you enjoy. Yeah, so I guess just maybe a couple other questions before we, we move on to the next book. I know it's kind of taking a while, but mm -hmm. um, so what does, what does Vasia represent to you? Um, and also like any other characters that come up in this book, like Peter, Anna, Constantine, Danya, Morazko, any others, if they represent anything to you. Honestly, I don't ever really think about it like that, like symbolically or anything. I'm just like, oh, they're a person in a book. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, I ha I hadn't been I hadn't really thought about this either, um, but it did kind of make me think like, oh yeah, they kind of are like. Like, Vasia kind of represents to me, yeah, like what you said, Mom, like a wild spirit, kind of like, just like a free free thinker and just kind of mm -hmm. does her own thing, I guess. Um, kind of like a modern woman. Yeah, right. And like, Peter is more, feels more like, like the tradition, like he kind of represents tradition and family, kind of, and... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's kind what of what about Morazko? I don't know how you say it. Morazko. Yeah. I guess as far as this book goes, chaotic good. I guess. Yeah. At least as far as <laughs> yeah. As far as well, he does these yeah. As, right. Uh, but yeah, I thought of him as kind of as being the good character. And the bear as being the bad character. Oh, it's a kitty. Yeah, Cute. I think they kind of tried to desk. <laughs> portray them that way to begin with. But I think they definitely are both kind of well, um, Morocco more than the bear. But um, they're kind of more neutral. Or they're, they're both, I think, supposed to be neutral. But uh, the bear just likes chaos. Like, He's chaotic just, neutral. he is more of just chaotic neutral in just yeah. the sense of the word. Like, he just, he just likes chaos to be going on. Mm -hmm. And Morozko is more just neutral. Like, he just, or I guess neutral good. Like, he wants there to be good things, but at the same time, like, he is, yeah, like you said, the spirit of basically death. So, you see kind of more than one side of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought he was very. I thought I thought she did a good job, kind of showing different parts of of him. Mm -hmm. And he was also the knight in shining armor. Well, the white horse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. True. Yeah. I did like that kind of being his like introduction. Like I think that also kind of helped set the scene of like how you're supposed to think of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I don't know if it was just kind of like to kind of, because I mean, yes, he's, he is the good, I don't know. He is good, but at the same time, like, it's also kind of like, he's not necessarily um, the, like, best, if that makes sense. Not, yeah. He's not like perfect good. He's right. not, yeah, he's like, not, he's definitely not lawful good, because like, mm -hmm. you know, he- Did, did you say lawful? Um, lawful. Lawful. Good. Oh, lawful. <laughs> I'm using terms that I can kind of conceptualize, like... They're like D&D. &D yeah, yeah. D&D. Because, right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, he did, like, he provided her home, like, a home in the woods, basically. Mm -hmm. right. And, like, that's not really a lawful good thing to do. Like, the lawful good thing to do is to send her back home and, like, that's just yeah. a comment on his on his chaotic goodness. <laughs> well, I mean, it also plays on his chaoticness just from the fact that he kind of let her, like, get into trouble, like, being out in the woods, too. Like, but then, like, saving her, even though, like, he, mm -hmm. you know, he's like, oh, I was just kind of testing you, you know? It's like, 
Right. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Miranda, you had the um like the last question that we had for this book, even though we've covered like we're kind of talking about them all, but um, yeah, so, to, like a solidified to solidify this this book. <laughs> I actually would rather talk about your um, the fighting scene. Oh, yeah. okay, sure. Um, I know Melissa, you kind of were like, what did you guys think about it? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of agree with the fact that it was kind of felt really rushed. Like, yeah, I felt like I didn't know. It felt like kind of like it just like flashed through like really fast, like kind of like how just like skipping, like mm -hmm. I don't know. I felt like it didn't feel like there was substance there. Yeah, I, and felt I think like, the fact. Oh, sorry. Go, go, go for it. I was gonna say, and then there was the part where she did something about her father, and her father hadn't even been there yet. That threw me for a little bit, and I had to reread and go. Well, maybe this sentence should have been, or this paragraph should have been later in the fight scene. Yeah, I didn't catch that, but that's yeah. not surprising. <laughs> um, yeah, but I thought I just, it was a good fight scene. I mean, I mean, it did have the lineup of the good, and I'll put good and evil in quotes. You know, there were two <laughs> sides, and mm -hmm. there's the side that you wanted to root for, and the side that you yes. wanted to lose. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, yeah, there were definitely like a distinction, but like a line in the sand. But at the same time, I felt like it. I don't know if it was just like I was like just kind of like skimming through it because it didn't interest me all that much, or if it was just like confusing. It just confused, like, it just didn't seem like there was a lot there or, mm -hmm. like, what exactly it was. But I just, I didn't, I don't know, I felt like it needed more to mm -hmm. it than what it was given. Yeah. Like, I feel I, like later on, like, in the other books, like, the other scenes were, like, fine. But, like, mm -hmm. that one in particular, I agree, it just felt kind of lackluster, Yeah, it, did, it felt, yeah, yeah, lackluster is a good word for it. it. Yeah, it felt like maybe, maybe there needed to be a little more of, like, a, like, rallying up the charity a little more or like I don't know like more of a setup and then yeah I I love the idea though like I love the image that she gave us of this spiritual battle essentially and yeah like creatures that we were not familiar with in western folklore and fairy tales like I'm at least I'm not I should say me I'm not familiar with these Domovoi creatures and so thinking about them in terms of like this this battle and I love the idea of it but yeah I just yeah it, it felt like it needed a little something <laughs> what about you Angie um yeah you guys really yeah summed up <laughs> I felt the same way like yeah that just yeah yeah so I guess and then it was, it was sad like, that the dad died. Yeah, that was sad. It was, felt, yeah. It was, but I also feel like it was kind of, it, like Melissa kind of portrayed him as like the family, like that kind of, mm -hmm. it didn't get definitely kind of solidified that that's kind of what his part was. Like he is the protector of the family and that's mm. kind of how later on we kind of figure out like, yeah, he was kind of told what was going to happen. So he knew what he was getting in, into, like what he was doing. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, it was sad. I, yeah, I was just thinking about the, the, the necklace too that... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forgot that was kind of like a key oh, part yeah. of that. <laughs> oh my book. god, yeah. <laughs> um, it, was it, yeah, it was the Winter King himself that had given it to the dad, mm -hmm. kind of, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah to give to her. Mm -hmm. Like when we when you first meet him, like he kind of is an asshole. To the right. dad and the brother, <laughs> like right. yeah. he doesn't come off as the white knight that Vasya no. sees. And I think that no. kind of goes with you know people have more than one side, and like you don't right. always necessarily see the other sides. For sure, and different people bring out different sides of us. Yeah, <laughs> that's for <true>. sure. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate yeah what the author did with with making all of those aspects 
part of the discussion, really. Um, mm -hmm. So the next book is The Girl in the Tower, and just some key plot points. Um, it takes place in Moscow, mainly, um, whereas the first one took place in the village, mostly. Um, Vasya is wandering around in the forest. She spends a lot of time, to me it seems like she spent a lot of time in the Winter King's little forest, um, like little hut thing. <laughs> um, she meets, she meets, well, does she meet Salove in this? Salove, yeah, she does. Yeah, she, she, in the first one, didn't she? I know, um, I'm not, because she becomes she more bad. Right, I right. I think she does in this one is when she actually just, I don't think she does in the first one. That was uh, another reason why the Nightingale confused me. <laughs> no, she met him in the first one because when she was lost in, because no, he, that's he her, helped in That's her home. horse. That's right. her horse, not his horse. The Nightingale is her horse. Yeah. yeah. But she didn't, she, didn't she get it after she went to his hut? Yes. And, like stayed there. Yes, That's that was I like thought. one of his gifts to her. But then with like, the bear and the nightingale, it made it seem like she did have an encounter. And it's been a while oh since God. I read it, so I don't yeah, I know. Remember. No, I can't remember. No, I'm not 100 sure. Like, but anyway, anyway, Salove becomes an important part of her life in this book. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Vasya <laughs> pretends to be a boy. Dimitri is fooled oh. along with everyone else. Um, she meets the nightingale in the first book. Okay. Okay. I had to look because otherwise it would have drove me crazy. Yeah, anyway. same here. <laughs> it really was a dumb title. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, um, we learned that Bessia's little cousin Maria also sees Dumavoy. Um, there was a big horse race against um, Cassia. Um, there was a huge fire caused by Pojar, the, ho the fiery horse, or Pozar. Um, we meet a new character, a new, like, bad guy, Cassia, or Cassia, who is also a demon, and we learn um, was Tamara, Tamara's former lover, um, and Tamara, well, we meet Tamara, which is um, Vasia's grandmother. Grandma. Yes. We meet the spirit of her grandmother. We meet the spirit of her grandmother, yes. Right. So, so those are the main points. Um, Miranda, you, your question, I mean, we can talk about our overall impressions too first if, if we want to, but, or we can just dive into questions. Dive. Let's dive. <laughs> All <Okay>. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so on page number 73, this is like when we first uh, meet Kasian Ludovic. Um, did any of you guys get a weird feeling from him? Oh, that's you in there. Sorry. Him? <laughs> um, yes. Like... <laughs> You meet him in the, Vizia the first, like, season, like, in the marketplace, like, across the market, but, like, I don't know, for me, like, the first time that, like, she sees him, like, he just, I don't know, like, he seemed weird. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, like, kind of creepy, like, yeah, yeah he, like, like when you're staring see, at her. Yeah, like, you see a random person somewhere, and you're like, that person's a creeper. Mm-hmm. And they stare at you. Yeah. <laughs> More than two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I actually, and I don't know, I always, I feel like I don't pick up on these things, like in movies or books, as quick as you guys. <laughs> I, I didn't really get like a really weird feeling from him. I just, I kind of pictured him, I pictured him like the guy in the orange-haired wildling in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Actually, I did too. <laughs> Except, that was like, my yeah, maybe a little more yeah, more yeah, like more serious. more serious version. But yeah, like kind of the same way. Like, not I didn't really. I got like a mysterious feeling, and like maybe he would become important later on. But um, but yeah, I was naive enough to not think that he was <laughs> <laughs> someone to be worried about. I guess. Did any of you guys, like, um, like, because, like, shortly after that, that's, like, when she, like, stops at, like, the bathhouse or whatever, and, like, she gets basically, like, people come after her. Like, did any of you guys tie them to him immediately? Yeah. Or? 
I, I, I thought did. it was him right away too. Yeah. I did too, just simply because like otherwise it felt kind of like okay, well, how the heck kind did they random. know? Yeah, like yeah. yeah. See, that's fair. Like I, I, you guys are piecing it together in terms of like, okay, how is this gonna make sense? <laughs> and I'm just like. <laughs> just stupidly in the moment, like, oh, you fooled me. No, <laughs> no that's not stupid at all. No, oh no, my no. god, no. But sometimes I just like... catch on to random things, like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip the question that I had in our notes, just because we talked about it already. Um, so in part three, Miranda, you had another point. Um, oh, yeah. So um, in the Baron Nightingale, Olya actually makes a reference to... Um, Catchy, Kaschi, Kaschai, I don't know how you say it, but um, it's all basically, good to me. <laughs> um, basically, yeah, it's actually Russian, <laughs> yeah, the, um, ca okay, um, Kashi the, the Deathless, um, so like, she's like, why don't you ever catch her, said um, Alyosha with some resentment as Olga towed him back to the house, she's only six. <laughs> Because I am not Kashi the Death Deathless, said Olga with some asperity, and I have no horse to outrun the wind. <laughs> so on page, in the second book here, like, we actually, it kind of actually comes into fruition. Like, the offhand comment that she made in the first book is actually seen here while they have their horse race. He that literally awesome. does catch her. That was really great. He has a horse to outrun the wind, essentially. Oh, yeah. 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 That was really great observation. <laughs> you know, I I actually didn't catch it the first time through, but I was looking back through oh, the first okay. book for questions, like sure. to like mm -hmm. things to like talk about, mm -hmm. and I actually happened upon the page, and I'm like, oh my god, like <laughs> I didn't catch this the first time through, and I'm like, that's like some super foreshadowing right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that's cool. Um, did any of you guys catch anything like that? Like. In any of the other spots, or oh, gosh, it's mm -hmm. too long ago to remember. <laughs> and I didn't reread them. I just barely made it on time. So. <laughs> I'm sure she threw in a whole lot of that, though. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she. It kind of makes me want to go back and like reread through them again, just to like see if there was <laughs> other things that I missed, like because mm -hmm. that was just happen chance that I found that, and it was because I was looking through for a different page number for some other question I had, and I saw it, and I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> this literally happens in the second book. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you don't find out that cool. it's him right away until later, but mm -hmm. it's still him, technically, so. Yeah, and no, that was really great. A horse that is of the same brood of Solovoy, a Solve, so. Yeah. I hmm. guess, so we don't really have too many questions for this book, so. Um, well, well, I have a Sorry. No, go for it. Go ahead. I was going to say, is this the book where the silver gets washed down the river? Nope. Nope. Okay. That's the next book. Okay, I wasn't sure if this but one Write down your question. Well, no, because I thought <laughs> if it was in this book, then that would relate like a foreshadowing of something that happened in the next book. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But, so what did you guys think about about like the women having to be in the tower? I know we touched on it a little bit before. I, that really surprised me because I never really thought about that. Yeah, they had like a really strong reaction to Vasia taking the, her niece out and like on a horse ride or whatever, you know, like. Yeah. Like, oh my god, your virtue. Right, right, <laughs> it's like, right. Yeah. What? <laughs> now you must go to a convent, you're only eight, but, you know. Right, oh you've been god. out in the world too much. <laughs> you've seen too much. Yeah, and I, I wonder, I mean, when I first was reading this and they were in the tower, I was just thinking, like, I guess I wasn't really thinking in terms of historical accuracy for some reason, because I say for some mm -hmm. reason because everything else has pretty much been that way. But um, but I now that you're asking that question, it just makes me wonder if if it has something to do with um, their class. Like, is it oh, are all like was it just like the the rich, you know? I would guess so. that, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good that's question. Nice. Because there were, I mean, because there were people that were 
girls and boys that were sliding down the big slide, you know, the ice slide down the street. And there were women out in the marketplace and stuff too. Right. Hmm. It's so, really interesting. Yeah. I'm um, pretty yeah. sure there were. Yeah, no, I think there were. I think it, it is pretty much just like if you are somebody, then you live within the gates and the women yeah. are relegated to the tower. <laughs> well, and they made it sound like, too, it's, it, they said it was unwed women that weren't allowed out. Oh, okay. Well, but she, Oleg, she was Olga pretty much was, stuck, too. She yeah. was pretty yeah. much stuck in there, too. I mean, she took the carriage to the princess house in one of the books. Oh, yeah. But she wasn't, like, she couldn't just, like, walk down the street there or whatever, like a guy could. Um, but she did say, like, when they would summer, they would go to her husband's oh, other like, house. A different place. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it was more of a, like, her village kind of thing where mm -hmm. she could be outside and have more freedom. You're right. Yeah. Because there weren't the prying it? eyes of <laughs> nobility all around. <laughs> I thought it was cool that. Uh, Vasia disguised herself as a boy and mm -hmm. it's just I don't know it's just so funny and so typical like, <laughs> that a guy would take a guy's advice and like think he's awesome and a good fighter and a good horse rider and then when it turns out she's a woman then she's a witch like <laughs> right come yeah on. Oh, so how could a woman have a brain or skills right <laughs> right yeah or ride a horse for that matter right <laughs> bareback even like, yeah, like doesn't even need a saddle <laughs> yeah. That brings in a really good question for me. Just, I just was thinking about this now. Just because we do read, we do read a lot of our history through surviving texts of the very wealthy, and through second, third, and on and on, you know, accounts mm -hmm. of history. <laughs> um, and I'm just thinking, you know, even even looking at a different culture, like um, from one modern cu culture to another modern culture, we have a tendency to think, oh, this is how they all, and I'm not saying that women didn't have, or the women had rights. I'm not, I'm not going down that path, don't worry. <laughs> like I know it was <laughs> different. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to get at is, um, like with Vasia, her family, they, they, knew she was she wasn't a witch or well in her case she kind of was but like she they knew her for who she for who she is like you know like mm -hmm. her family knew that she was smart and like you know like individuals know that the people in their mm -hmm. the people they know are a certain way i guess what i'm trying to say is like but they were also kind of wary of her too, like yeah. And her village, the villagers but, were very wary of her and scared. Right, of her and, and she's not the greatest people. example. But I, I, I guess I'm just more talking in terms of like women, like the culture norm and what's proper was mm -hmm. that, you know, that women were a certain way or to be treated mm -hmm. a certain way or, like they couldn't do this or that because. But like a f an individual family unit would probably have different opinions about the actuality. Maybe not probably, but I'm yes sure there were no. cases of like and a family they, unit. You know, like yeah, I feel like a I lot just, of times, yeah, they yeah. would know the person individually and know that yeah, oh yes, this, right. this she is really smart. Yeah. But at the same time, depending on where they are in time, like I think even if they know that, they still are a little bit wary. Like. Well, how can we fix this? <laughs> like, if this isn't the norm, like, mm -hmm. we could be outcast because of it. And exactly. I think that was right. like the biggest yeah. thing is that there was a oh, lot yeah. of fear. Right. Of just oh yeah. What wasn't was normal to the to the society in general? Like, exactly. Right. Right. So, like, I think this is this the book where she was 
Or was it the first one where she was um, betrothed? The first one. That one. Oh, yeah. We okay, did that was the first that. one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that kind of brought up the fact that, you know, she jumped on the horse and, and went to go save whoever. And the guy was just like so taken aback that he wanted nothing to do with her because his pride was hurt that she was better at writing and whatever. I and actually thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. It's like, oh God, she's not going to want to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he was mean to his horse. And, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, it, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, but it, it just kind of, you know, and, and and the villagers also thought that you know she was, there was something wrong with her because she could ride so well and she could do all these things that guys did and women all, weren't supposed to. Do. All they needed to do was make friends with the the stable charity and they'd be fun. <laughs> I <laughs> could do the same thing. <laughs> Should have just kept offering. Yeah. <laughs> I guess too. I, I was kind of thinking of different characters that we see in different stories, like Arya. Like, we know Arya was really good in archery and like she could, she was like the tomboy of the family and like mm -hmm. they all kind of like knew she was like, they knew she was capable and like, but they also knew like, okay, this isn't like, the, yeah, this isn't what society is going to want you to do. So like, pat, 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 like, grow up. <laughs> you have to do you this know? and she still had to do her like crocheting or knitting or right. embroidery right. or whatever. Yeah. Wear dresses. So. It's just, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, like, it's just interesting what what narrative comes through um, as far as, like, I, I guess I'm just, like, I try not to assume that every individual in a certain time of, like, history thought, like, like, people are people, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, I think it's not too you know? different. You could draw a parallel to now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that oh, yeah. are are open to how people are different and there are a lot of people who are not. Right, right. And yeah. if you don't fit in what they think, you know, it should be. Right. Then you're like some weird trash person. Exactly. So. And like a family member <laughs> yeah. might accept, accept a certain whatever of their family member, but then they might go vote for something that's against what their family member is about, which is, which is, voting for the, the societal norm. So it's like you kind of have both narratives going on. And right, there's also, still, there's some safety, you know, in following mm -hmm. the norm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you have to be brave sometimes to stand up. For mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to lose communications with your family if they are on the opposite side and on um, a very different wow. side. What? Yeah, and I was actually gonna, um, that was one thing that I was wondering too, is like, what do you guys think about her family? Um, like, I thought it was really cool that like pretty much all of her family um, was, like they were a really strong family unit, even though they were all like very different. And to me, that was kind of surprising. Um, but I thought it was really cool. And I thought it, I think it's really important. It was really important for Vas Vasia to become who she is. Um, you know, but I was just because surprised. Like even yeah. like everyone was like, like Sasha is a monk and she's a witch and <laughs> Olya took the traditional path and <laughs> like right. they're all so different. And they're in this time where like, yeah, I don't know. They were willing to lie for her. I mean, right. Yeah. They were like, oh yeah, you're, yeah, that's definitely our brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely. Yep. <laughs> Sorry we didn't tell you about that one, but yep, definitely our brother. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, they were able, like willing to lie for her, and when they knew it would cost them mm -hmm. dearly, yeah. and like it almost did cost them all very much. Yeah, I thought that was pretty amazing too, because mm -hmm. not every family is like that. Mm -hmm. No, the thing is too is that everyone that was born before Vasia knew their mother Marina. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they that was a really could good draw point, parallels. Actually. 
to her, to their mom and her. And so we're maybe like, oh, she reminds me so much of mom. When and she Sasha does did this. say that a couple times, I True. think. True. Yeah. That's a really good point. And I, I think that was probably supposed to come through. Like, I, I feel like I should have captured onto that. But yeah, that's a really <laughs> good point. Mm -hmm. Thanks again so much for stopping by. We really appreciate you. Like Vasya's family, is your family pretty diverse in values and or life paths? If so, what challenges have you faced? And how have you overcome them? Comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next week. We thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like our videos. It shows us that you enjoy what we're doing. Share with others. It brings together and broadens the community of book lovers and free thinkers. Subscribe. It helps support the mission to inspire more readers, promote free thinking, and sustain the art of conversation. And at 100 subscribers, we are doing a book giveaway. And comment, we want to get to know you. Happy reading, Gallimaufries. We'll see you next time.